Okay guys, next up we're gonna put the oil filter housing on. Now I've got a brand new bolt here. Uh, this bolt goes into the housing. And another thing I wanted to talk about is I use the NA housing. And some people are gonna be like, why do you use this housing? A lot of people I see for a couple things. One, I see a lot of people bolt their filter directly to the block, which is fine, but when you're gonna take it off, no matter what you do, as soon as you break that seal, it runs down the side of your block. Not a fan of that. The other one is the same filter housing, but it has an adapter sandwich on it that lets coolant go through it, which is great. Helps supposedly cool the oil. From what my understanding is, it didn't really do its job because it's just, yeah, it, did, it didn't work that well. Um, so an external cooler would probably work better, but using the factory setup didn't make sense. So I eliminate that. And it also allows you to eliminate, which I'm gonna show you guys some more here, um, the pipe that wraps the whole way around the block head and all that stuff. So I use the NA pipe that then I'm gonna cut here, have go up, um, and goes right into the heater core, then comes back into the head and goes through. So it eliminates that, and that's failure points. So it doesn't wrap around here, comes the whole here. I'm gonna explain about the motor mounts here in a minute too, but that's the port it would come into. So it would run coolant through here, then it would go back into the block there. Um, they actually sell this plug, that is a NA plug. Um, you can actually get that from Toyota, but it is a 3.8 BSPT, British Standard Pipe Thread. Uh, do not use NPT for that. Uh, it's just what the Japanese use for this. Uh, instead of NPT, they use BSPT. So I just put a little PTFE paste on it, blocked it off, been doing that for years. My wife's been that way. That's been in there since 2013. Obviously it was taken out to have the block built, um, but yeah, just put it back in. It's the original plug and everything. Probably should have bought a new one, but it's not gonna hurt it. You're never gonna see it. I uh, just wanna let you guys know that though. I had to step over all my parts here. So yeah, I'm saying that this filter housing is what I use. It makes it a little bit easier. So when you go to change your oil to, it's not just right up against the block. It does stand off. Uh, I do have a trick for changing oil too. So I'll kind of show you guys that once I get it bolted up, but there's a trick I do it because I know people are gonna say, well, with that style intake manifold, Ryan, why don't you just use a relocation kit? But I still don't like relocation kit. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is this. This is a VBTI or IS300 bolt. This actually goes up through and holds this onto the block. This has a BSPT eighth inch hole in it. This is where the factory oil sensor went. I'm gonna use the Bosch sensor like I did in my wife's. Hers already came with this because this was a non-VBTI, it didn't. If you guys want that part number, I've got another brand new one here because I ordered too many, but that's the part number for that exact bolt. You also need a washer. Um, I forget the part number for that, so I apologize, guys, but you will need a washer, and it is specific, so it's not just some generic washer. As you can see here, it's got like these teeth on it to help keep it centered, so make sure you order that too. It's gonna be cheap. Um, when you attach this to the block, this here, because uh, since this isn't going directly to the block, you have this as an O-ring. It has these little teeth to hold it in there. I also kind of oil or grease this up so it doesn't dry out, but that is the part number for this specific O-ring that sits right inside of here. Ah, oh, don't lose the bolt. Uh, that sits inside this groove here. And then you guys are gonna need an oil filter, and this is a generic oil filter that you need from Toyota. Also, this bolt head is a 24 millimeter, I believe. What did I try? Yeah, it's a 24 millimeter, put that on. So, very basic. Uh, before you put the filter on too, guys, I need to go do, put some oil in here. Uh, I've always filled these up ahead of time, especially with a dry engine like this. I don't wanna take any chances. I'm gonna have oil in the system. Before I even started to, I will pull the accessory um, so I can just literally turn the car, pump oil through the pump, which has oil. I'm gonna dump oil in through the pump here too. There's a plug on the top, but fill this up with oil too. This way you just don't wanna run the system dry, especially with a brand new engine, you don't wanna take any chances. And then this filter is gonna last literally for probably turn on, check everything, take it off, cut it open, check for bearing material or any metal, then let the car run for 50 to 100 miles, then take this off again, you will change the oil, cut open check and then break it into 500 miles check it one more time and then probably i'll keep checking build engine life probably going to check it more often but yeah so before i put this on i need to go put oil in it so brad pen brad pen break in oil uh, is what i'm using but i wanted to show you one other thing too when you're putting this on so years ago i had removed this stud and when i put this engine back together i actually put a nut through it getting this lined up and then getting this here would be a little bit more a pain in the ass. This is literally to keep this from spinning. So this right here is to keep this housing area from spinning or rotating when you're tightening this up. So it's literally just a stud with threads on it. And I thought you had to put a nut on or do something. No, it, you don't put anything. It's literally just a stud to hold this from rotating when you're tightening this up. That's it. Uh, to keep it centered and exactly where it's supposed to be. That is the only purpose of that. Do not put a nut on it. Don't do anything. Just leave it like it is. Um, and then crank this down. I don't even know what the foot pounds in. I'm not gonna lie. I just crank this down because I didn't want it coming loose. Um, and again, I need to get a sensor, but I don't have the adapter yet. Uh, I originally was gonna drill one of these out, but the, the metal, metal for this is so hard, it is unreal. So I wanted to drill this out, tap it, and make it, I think it's like M10 by 1.0 for the Bosch sensor, but I'm gonna have to use an adapter with the Bosch sensor, um, just like I did my wife's. Not ideal, but 
uh, it should suffice or work. And again, someone could probably say, well, Ryan, why don't you put the sensor here or here, right? There are two ports. I can access this sensor. Once this is on with the AC uh, uh, bolted up, it's damn near impossible to get to this. And I don't like that. This I can service, that I can't. Um, so I'd rather plug those off, get to something I can easily access when needed. I hate that for a little bit because one more hole, one more failure point. These should be fine, but yeah. But yeah, so that's all on there, guys. And uh, let's go on to the next thing. All right, guys, another day, another engine video. So, engine slipped over now. Um, I just love, let's just look down here and appreciate this again. Everything is marked off, every little detail, even the oil block offs from PHR. I just spun the engine over too, just because I wanted to do that. Um, put the O-ring in here, but I need to clean the surface off because it is oiled up. He did that on purpose because he didn't know how long it'd be sitting. So I'm gonna clean that surface off with brake cleaner. Um, I'm gonna try and say not to get to this point here. I'm just gonna try and get it right to this edge because that area there, I'm not gonna be touching. I want that to stay oiled. I don't want any rust to build up, right? Uh, as you can see here, the pan only goes so far. That outside rusty area you see, that's where the pan doesn't touch the block. Um, so I might actually have to put the pan on and it fully dries after a day or so. I might actually scuff that because I just don't want that debris to get in the engine. Scuff that and just paint it. Doesn't matter again, bottom of the side of the engine. No, but I'm doing all this other stuff, so it's kind of like might as well. Speaking of that, um, coming over here to the pan, this pan is the one that came from Japan and it's crusty. Now the inside, Tom had scrubbed it clean. Now I need to get some of the little FIPG from the last time. I'm gonna hit that with some more brushes. I've got these copper brushes that really do a good job of this, but it still has like, look at this corrosion and stuff. Again, you won't really see this, but for my, I'm putting this all together. I want this off, I want it to be clean. So if I'm, I mean, even if I touch it now, it's still coming off my hand a little bit. I wanna find there's aluminum brighteners and cleaners. I wanna give it a shot, try to get all this off of it and hope it works. So we'll see, I'm gonna try that here today. Then I like to get this pan on. Uh, the baffle system, so I've got the baffle over here. He actually cleaned this up and look what it did to it Like when he cleaned it if you ever seen one factory they don't look like this uh, And he cleaned the pan too now I did notice these from the factory have a black coating on them and I can see it's starting to build up a rust on it So I want to get this on today, and I'm gonna coat this whole thing in oil So I'm gonna rub it down in oil so it doesn't corrode anymore um, Just don't want that and then I'll also go over the bolts, but I don't want to talk about that yet because, you know, that doesn't matter. The only thing I do want to talk about first and foremost, though, is the O-ring. So you need to use this O-ring here. This is the oil O-ring. So here's the part number for that. So if you guys can see it there, this O-ring needs to go in first. And I'm making sure to do this because I actually had to take this pan off last time years ago for Kat's car. When I did her engine like two years ago, I was just in a rush and I forgot to put that in. So just want to say, make sure that goes in. It'll fit a little tight, uh, but that is the part number. I think it's changed like three times on me now. It's quite annoying, uh, but you do need that. And again, you're going to clean the surface off, get all the oil off. I'm probably going to clean the extra FIPG off here, 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 and here from when I put on the rear main seal and then the oil pump. Just so when I put this new bead on, it'll be completely smooth and flat and won't have a bump on it. You don't want that because that can cause an area where it can leak from. So I'll shut up now. Uh, hopefully I can get a video too of cleaning this up, what it looks like before and after, or maybe I'll just show you now. So this is what it looks like. See how crusty it is here and here. And the bottom side, not so much, but it's like even stuff like this, the top side of it where you will see, and over here, I want to get all of that out. I want to get all of it. So I'm going to try and find something and hope it works. All right, guys, so it's time to start the pan now. So we're going to go across this entire surface here. Um, here is what it looks like in the book itself. So if we come down here, you see, again, it tells you I've got about five minutes to get this on. Um, do the upper oil pan. There is two sets of bolts. So you got a 12 millimeter nut head and a 14 millimeter. 14 millimeter. Um, I believe there's like 14 of these and then like four or six of these, I'm sorry. So 15 foot pounds for the 12 millimeter heads, 29 foot pounds for the smaller heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this silicone up. I'm not gonna record this part because I've already got the camera set up to install it and you'll see me torque it down. Uh, but you can see here in the book how it needs to go on. So it starts going in, 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 then it goes in the outer part, comes back in and then in, out, outer part, outer part, outer part, then back in, in, in. So just so you guys can see that, but yeah, not a big deal. You guys, if you have the book or you can actually look this up online, it's all free information. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera, do this and install it. All right guys, so now I need to line up. There's pins here in the back that you can line this up with. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, it's just way harder than what you think too, because it wants to automatically. All right guys, now that the pan is on there, there's these long bolts. I'll start threading those in. 
So there's gonna be a total of six of these. So one thing that's not brand new on this, uh, unfortunately, so put those in, put those in. I need to get these driven in as fast as possible also. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is kind of drop these in and just at least get them threaded in somewhat and then use my, get that started, use my, um, I will shoot ratchet to get these really drawn in real quick because I don't want to take any chances of this setting up and me kind of being, lack of better words, SOL. These are some Bellmetric bolts too. I got off of uh, bellmetric.com. These are 10.9 bolts. These are zinc coated also. I hate doing the inside part here. This part always sucks because you always worry about dropping a bolt down in. Give me a second here, guys. Just trying to drive these in a little bit. Faster I get them in, the better. So let's get these started. Okay guys, 29 foot pounds for the 14 millimeter bolts. I hate that I only have this half inch, but it is what it is. Oh, I need to tighten this up. I think it's even closed to it, it's still. Okay, that one's good. That one's good. So those are all good. Now on to the 12 millimeter heads. So for those, those are only 15 foot pounds guys. All right. So start with this side first.
All right, guys, so next up, we gotta put the baffle plate in. Uh, it takes these 10 millimeter nuts. I think it's 78, 78 inch pounds. No Loctite, no nothing like that is specified in the book. Um, oops, get it lined up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start placing these in and get everything lined up and then crank it down. Nothing crazy. Um, so yeah, like I said, just going to bolt it up. Looks like in the past, again, it's been a while since I've been in here. It looks like a bolt was snapped off years ago. That's not, uh, not good. I guess that was done years ago. And I guess I never noticed it before, but it shouldn't be a problem because there's enough bolts in here holding it, but definitely different. I did not realize. You definitely see right there, the bolt has been snapped off in there. So it's only so much I can do. That's why I'm using a little quarter inch because it's 10 millimeter. Nothing crazy needs to go on here. That does bother me a little bit. I'm not gonna even lie, but I guess it is what it is. All right, guys, last up is the lower oil pan. Uh, you can see we've cleaned the surface here, get most of the old FIPG that was in here before. Again, we're just gonna follow a bead the whole way around and uh, then put it on the car. Actually, let's go look at the book because I can't remember off the top of my head if it's on the inside, I assume it is, yes. So we need to make sure that the FIPG goes on the inside of the bolts there. And then you can see here, there's two studs Okay, that line it up and then you put two 10 millimeter nuts on those, the rest are actually bolts. Uh, for that, I actually bought brand new stainless steel bolts uh, that are flanged heads and I've got two brand new stainless steel nuts here also just because it looks a little better. Kind of here, like I said, had to reuse the longer bolts because you can get the right length, but everything else, went ahead and get those new. So I'm gonna shut up now, go ahead and put the FIPG on that and then you'll see me install it. Okay guys, got the pan all set up here. Um, let's go ahead and line this up. This part sucks because I want to make sure. Oh, I'm sorry if my bald head's in the way. I apologize. There we go. All right, so we're going to just start threading bolts in now and uh, get her cranked down. Okay guys, so that seemed like a bit of a cluster. Uh, I'm just gonna show this because I saw it, showed it in the video. But these ones here are apparently too long. The only thing that's worrying me, if I don't know if there's debris down those blind holes, but here's the exact bolts I had in it before. Didn't have that problem. Um, I just bought new ones, same length, across the board, and they were bottoming out here in the blind holes, but before they didn't. So I don't know if there's just gunk down in there. So the shorter ones I put in, um, stainless steel bolts, so on and so forth, shouldn't be a problem, but yeah, there's plenty of thread on it, so I guess it was, maybe not, maybe there's worm uh, bottoming out. I never had a leak from the oil pans, it just shows you how crazy FIPG is, um, if that was the case. But yeah, this is just spray painted to guys, by the way, this was cleaned up, sanded it, kind of. You see how rough it is. This one did black, just, it's underneath the car, it doesn't need to be perfect, but wanted to spray paint it. Clean this up the best I could, 
The gold tint you see is actually from using a brass brush. And then I also used um, chrome slash aluminum cleaner. Got it pretty good. Just wanted it cleaned up. New bolts here. Um, pretty happy. You guys saw me torque it all down. So yeah, uh, the only other thing I need to do now is flip it over um, and put some of the sensors in just because let's go, why not? Like, you know, why not? I'm just, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think I did an okay job. Need to let it set up. Obviously I'm not gonna be driving it anytime soon, but need to set up, you know, tighten up. And then usually from what I've read in the book, they said give it 24 hours. But for being honest, any shop is not doing that. If they need to car it that day, they're turning it on within 30 minutes to an hour. So the stuff sets up quick, but happy. Looks pretty decently clean. So let's go ahead and flip it over and then put in some of the sensor ports. All right guys, so flipped it back over. Now the reason I wanted to clean it up is uh, as you can see here, see how clean that looks? Again, I used to get oil out of the dipstick. Now, I went to the new Freed Engineering dipstick, which I think I've mentioned before, uh, this guy here, um, and I no longer leak. Uh, so let's see if I can get it to focus here. See double O-ring? Now, Factory actually has a single O-ring, then an upper O-ring too. For, for some reason, this is not leaking. I even replaced the O-rings on my Factory dipsticks, not once, but twice, upper and lower, and kept getting issues. Once I went to this, no longer leaks. Don't know why, but it doesn't. What I also want to show you is this from Powerhouse Racing. This is a sensor port. So I'm going to be running crankcase pressure. Here is the part number. Here's the item. Crankcase and oil temperature. Don't need oil temperature because I'm going to use the uh, Bosch sensor, which does pressure and temperature all in one. So I just wanted this for the crankcase. I've had crankcase issues in the past, and I'm like, you know what? I've got a nexus with every port possible. I'm running a manual car, so I've got tons of inputs and outputs. Why not utilize this? So it's a very basic setup. You can see here it's O-ringed, um, and it goes where your factory oil level sensor goes. So right here, uh, I'm going to oil this up just so it slides in nice. And then it comes with the bolts too, so you don't have to even supply the bolts uh, Bolts up, and then you'll put your oil pressure sensor there. I blocked this bottom one off because I don't have an oil temp sensor. So just using the top one because we're doing pressure, and it just sits in there like that. So I'll let you guys see it once it's done. All right, so this is what it looks like once it's bolted up here, guys. So uh, it's just a sensor port. So I blocked off the bottom one again, leave the top one open. This is gonna be my crankcase pressure. I'm not sure if this is truly necessary, but it's gonna be cool. Maybe I could use this for something else down the road. I don't know, but you get two ports, so pretty neat. I already have one of the fuel lines that I'd ran before coming through here, but that's it. Comes from Powerhouse Racing, bolts up, comes with the bolts too. Um, yeah, I mean, this is what it's looking like now. Like, this doesn't get old to me. Um, just bolting up the intake manifold, sitting all the stuff on, starting to really look like an engine to me. Uh, I was playing around putting on the power steering pump here too, figuring out what bolts and stuff I need, different lengths. Some of the old bolts are here, and I was like, uh, as I look at them, I was like, all right, I gotta replace those now. So uh, I did order a new crank bolt. Uh, Tuan talked me into that. So I'm gonna use this to, to work on the car for now, and then when I'm done and I'm going to actually put the damper on, I'm gonna crank on the new bolts. Um, and it just look better. So yeah, it's coming together, guys. Just need a wiring harness and yeah, because I mean, I'm just literally piddling around at this point. There is not a ton left to do. I'm just kind of messing around. The turbo kit will be in, but unlike my wife's car where I had like, oh crap, ran into this, oh crap, ran into that. Like I have everything. Like I've got the clutch, I've got the trans, I've got the drive shaft. So I can't, I can put the engine in now, but the reason I haven't is I really want to do the wiring outside of it. Plus, the, before I put the engine too, I want the turbo kit because I'm going to run hard lines for the Mac valve here. So I'm going to run uh, 3AN uh, lines to the wastegates and all that stuff. So yeah, I uh, just want it to be, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for here, but I want it to be super clean. It be easy to work outside of the car because I'm going to run hard lines through it. So I'm going to use stainless steel hard lines. Now, I've been told to use 3AN for this, but I've heard some people have some issues. So, you know, if someone can give me feedback here. 3 a.m. versus 4 a.m., uh, so which is 3 sixteenths versus quarter inch. What's your guys' opinion on that? I have both in stainless steel here. I've got the fittings on both too. I just thought, you know, 3 sixteenths be easier to bend for one. Number two, uh, easier to get fittings, so on and so forth. Some smaller tubing, can fit it more places, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the, the whole reason I want to go to a hard line is just for the fact that I can run it in more places. I don't have to try to keep it away from a heat source. It just, it doesn't care. So I can run it back behind if I need to. So I could take it, run it down, run it up here, do whatever. The, the car won't care uh, versus with um, rubber lines or anything, even with silicone, I've got to be a little bit more careful. So want to get that all done. Again, guys, thank you very much for the support. Um, things are going along pretty well. So getting the last little bit, again, I do need to do a video also on shimming the head. I'll do that. I really would like Tom here to do that. So maybe I'll ask him if he can come down. It's supposed to be a rainy weekend, so maybe I can get him to come down. That would be sweet. And we can get these cams installed. So yeah, talk to you later, guys. Peace.